Good afternoon, I am Pete, also known as Risk for Rewards on Twitter. I've currently got around just under 12,000 followers over there and about 400 subscribers here on YouTube. Um, if you're looking to follow Ready for the Cheltenham Festival, I'd probably subscribe on here and also on Twitter because all the content will be coming live. Um, I've currently got a Cheltenham blog, which has got all my anti-post bets on it for the last 10 months. And I'll also be doing a blog for the festival, which last year had all 28 races covered and over 30,000 words. That'll probably be up around a week before the festival. And it'll have all my anti-post selections in and my current thoughts on them for that race. But it'll also have a fresh selection because I know there's plenty of people that just want to punt their ears off for the for the week. But they don't bother following for the rest of the year, which makes just as much sense to me. So, um uh, yep, all of that will be on my Twitter and also on my blog, but there'll be plenty of videos because I can get the videos out quicker like I'm doing today. So today's video is just covering the entries that have come out for the uh, novice chases. So there's a lot of blue markets and a lot of market movements. So I just wanted to throw up a few uh, thoughts of uh, how I think things are going and a few bets that I've had. So currently the Arkle, no shock entries, no shock admissions. So I'm just going to skip it it's as we expected. And we'll know a lot more um, coming up to the Dublin Racing Festival. I will have a blog out for the Dublin Racing Festival covering all the horses that I'll be back in there and the horses I'll be doing doubles to win there and to win the Cheltenham Festival. Uh, the first big race is the National Hunt Chase. That has got a few shock omissions with the fact that um, Bally Griffin Cottage was 14 to 1, um, is not running there, and Classic Getaway is also uh, not entered there. Um, both of those two were 12 to 1 and 10 to 1. So losing both of those has left a sea of blue around the around the market. So you've got uh, Ramilis for Willie Mullins at 14s, and then downwards you've got Gentleman's Game, who could end up in the three miler. Um, you've got Jerry Colom at tens, who could also end up in the three miler. Um, you've then got Chemical Energy at sevens, and then Galliard du Mesnil. So the first instinct a lot of people I can see are doing, unless it's just a book he's cutting it, is Gallia de Mesnil is now into even money in places. For me, we're on at either sixes or eight to one. That's brilliant. But at the same time, I cannot see this horse being shorter than uh, even money on the day. So there is no reason to start piling in at even money. Um, and also, I have a, th a, th a second thought that there's no guarantee this horse is going to run in this race. Um, we'll find out more about that later on. But for me, I just wouldn't bother touching that horse. Even if you're not on, I'd probably just leave it for now. Um, the horse that I have topped up on, who obviously a lot of following the blog will already be on at nine or 10 to one, is our horse from October, November, and that's Chemical Energy. That is because Chemical Energy has only been given one novice chase entry, and that is here in the National Hunt Chase. I know the yard are on, I know the trainers are on, and they're all on about 66 to one. Gordon only sends one or two arrows to this race, and if Gordon's had a few quid on himself, he's not going to go putting in too many other horses unless he's backed them at big prices as well. If he thinks this horse can run, he will. if he thinks it's going to win, this will be his solo entry. He may well enter another, and the one that I'd hope he isn't going to enter with it is Jerry Colom, um, because I think he's got strong chances elsewhere, but he'd be a massive player in this race. So for me, I think... Uh, chemical energy is quite the standout in this race for Gordon and Gordon has won this event multiple times in the last few years and he's also had placed uh, horses he also normally only runs one and he may run two at most so he knows how to win it and he won't waste darts on it so therefore chemical energy is the top up at the current price of seven to one for me um, the other horse that's very interesting is Ramilis who's currently 14 to one a very slow plodder boat of a horse um, and would have a great chance in a race like this. Um, but currently, at the moment, we don't know what's happened with Galliard du Mesnil. So if Galliard du Mesnil runs, Patrick will be on that horse, and Ramilis will be the second string. May still end up going off eights and tens. So maybe one for a free bet or something, but just chemical energy for the top up, and Galliard du Mesnil, no rush currently. So that brings us on to Brown Advisory. The reason I think it's no rush with the Galliard du Mesnil is because I'm looking through the current entries, and now Willie's lost Time Hill, he's lost Manella Kakuna. Um, and he's not entered classic getaway. He's really got Galliard du Mesnil left um, and Ramilis over three miles or further. So Galliard du Mesnil picked up a Group One this year. The Group One uh, wasn't a, it wasn't a brilliant race, and I'd 100% admit the whole race fell apart. So what we learned there was not too much, but he does look a much better horse, and he looks like he's improved from last year, and he's obviously got a lot more chasing experience than everyone else. Um, the obviously the the obvious thing with Galliard du Mesnil is that. It, Everyone thinks he's slow and he's a boat and he's a plodder and it could well end up that way. And I do think if he went to the National Hunt Chase, he'd have an outstanding chance. Whereas in the Brown Advisory chance, he would have a good chance, just like many of the others. 
The Brown Advisory is very weak currently, and by weak I just mean it's very competitive with zero standouts. So by the time the Dublin Race Festival, something might have stamped on it and be like a three to one favourite, and Mullins might think, okay, no, I don't really want to go there. But you look at the Brown Advisory that he finished third in last year, and everyone would say, well, he can't possibly place or win this year's because he couldn't do it last year. But last year, Lahon Press was first, Ahoy Senor was second, and Capadano was fourth behind him. All three of those have won Group 1s. So that was a seriously hot race that he contested last year. And he, was, he wasn't at the experience that he's got this year. So you, you would argue in a weaker race that he's... I'd, I'd, think, I'd expect him to be placed at least. But the market's reflecting that now. He is sixes. So I had a small saver on him when I probably got a little bit over the top when he won last time out. Um, but I didn't expect him to come here because the Mullins had so many other darts. But the darts are falling away. So that was my main reason with the Galliard de Mesnil not for the national hunt backing him unless it's non-runner no bet at a short price was in case he switches to here he may he may not I don't know any different it's Patrick's Mullins whisper in his ear but if Willie thinks he could get one in both here and the national hunt with good chances then he may do it but at the end of the day he's probably gonna have an even money or a six to four shot in the um, national hunt chase whereas he, he may well end up going four or five to one here so that's just my opinion um, of the rest there wasn't really any too many shock admissions brown advisory uh, Bally Griffin Cottage is only entered here um, and also the same with Tell Me Something Girl and Time Hill with regards to chasing. So Time Hill, that's brilliant. Obviously, we're on at 22s. Thought that slip was long gone. Looked much better last time out in a wide open race. You're happy with that at 22s. Current eights. So this race is all over the shop at the moment. There's plenty that are entered. Horses like James de Burley, um, Bambridge. Um, Blazing Carl, can't see any of those running. James of Burley, two mile four. Bambridge, two miles or two mile four. So it is going to cut up and it will get shorter. So we'll just have to wait and see. But I just wouldn't rush to back Galia de Mesnil unless you're having a non runner no bet cover in the Brown Advisory if you think yourself that he's going to win. I really like Jerry Colomb um, for Gordon Elliott. And if he was to go to the Brown Advisory, he'd be interesting. He's, he's not got the experience of some of the others and I'm not sure where he's aimed and if he's going to be running at the Dublin Racing Festival. But he'd definitely be an interesting contender here. Um, we fire through, keep it moving, keep it moving. We're on to the Turners. So Turners, again, was like the Arkle. There wasn't too many, there's not, not a lot of shock omissions. Um, Journey With Me is only entered in the Turners. Um, and because of that, it's been back from 25s into 12s after that big run on the weekend. Um, would have a chance, I'd agree with that, but found a couple too good last year. And I could easily see that being the case again this year. Like Mighty Potter's already put in some serious performance last time out. Um, appreciate it will be better here than the Arkle and James de Burley obviously has got a lot of back class he's yet to show his full potential but could well do and looked good on his debut nothing out of the top draw spectacular El Fabiolo I still think he'll go to the Arkle especially if James de Burley looks like he's cementing his spot here and if that's the case then El Fabiolo they won't run two green horses in the same race so El Fabiolo and John Bond will both go to the Arkle. Sir Gerhard at 10 to 1. That's very interesting if he runs. Obviously, I backed him at the start of the season. I thought that was completely done. Jerry Colomb's also entered here at 12s. So it's a hard race to weigh up. For me, I think you make your bed before the Dublin Racing Festival. So at the moment, the entries are Mighty Potter, Appreciate and James Burley are all entered over 2 mile 5. If if they end up um, racing at the Dublin Racing Festival and they do all declare, then you choose who you think is going to win that race there and the Turners and you back that in a double because you get a much better price and if you get it right, you are winning twice because there's a strong chance looking at those markets, they're all Irish horses. So the best one that wins that is probably going to win the Turners at Cheltenham as well. So you get paid out twice. You could end up back in two, two for the um, Turners or two for that race because they could end up being good prices. Mighty Pot is currently the five to two favourite for the Dublin Race Festival, but we don't know what's going to turn up against him yet. Appreciate it only ran last week, but if they decide they want to go two mile four, they may well put them in there. But no shock admissions. That's just my personal um, view on that uh, race currently. Um, keep going down, keep going down, keep going down. Gold Cup, Hunter's Chase. Over to the Mayor's Chase. So two significantly non-entered horses were Imper Impervious and Allegory de Vasse, of which neither have been entered in any of the other novice events. So therefore, it is Mayor's Chase solo currently. Obviously, you can supplement them, especially JP. It's not short of a few quid. But at the moment, it looks like the Mayor's Chase is all guns blazing for both Allegory de Vassi and Impervious. They were both left out of the Turners, despite connections saying um, after Impervious's win on the weekend against the uh, the males, saying 
we could well run in the Turners. They've not even bothered entering. If if you thought, or oh, we could, we may do it, then you would have entered. But for me, that's quite a big indication that there's not very much chance. So for those that are on at the 28 to 1s for Impervious and 8 to 1s Allegori Davassi, if they both get there, I'll be very disappointed if we're not collecting off one of those two. I mean, they're currently 15 to 8 and 9 to 4, and that's bang on exactly. Those two coupled together at 1 to 2 in the field that I can see in front of me is more than fair price. But you're waiting to see what turns up, what doesn't turn up and stuff. But I think those two look like absolute standouts. So there it is. That was just a, a quick overview of the current entries. The main one was obviously, as I mentioned, I've topped up on uh, chemical energy. Um, there's a little bit of rumour going around with the ice and the issues going on with uh, Ascot currently. Um, that The race could well be moved to Cheltenham, but that is just hearsay. Um, I, it probably won't happen. And the weather is supposed to get better later in the week. And Ascot aren't due to be racing all week. So they'll have all, re all week to get ready for the Saturday. If it's run at the um, if it's the Clarence House is run at Ascot, I think that suits Enigamim down to the ground from the front. Off she off he goes, um, and I think it will it suit perfect. It'll just meet every fence the same as he did last year, and uh, Edward Stone's got to come up to that level. If it goes to Cheltenham, I do think the track will suit. It's a bit like if it had gone to Cheltenham last year, everyone would have said that would suit Shishkin better. So we'll wait and see. But currently, price eight thirteen is quite mad because. He's a very similar price to win the champion chase. But obviously, you'll be looking to get him in some sort of multiple that whoever you think is going to win out of those two, um, you could get back them, obviously, for them to win on Saturday and to win at the festival because there's a strong chance that they probably will. For me, currently, as it's being held at Ascot, I think Edward Stone holds all the aces, especially with Edward Stone's hip, hiccup last time out. Not to say that he won't come on for it and be better at Cheltenham, but I'd be disappointed if Edward, if uh, Enigamine isn't taking that event on Saturday. So I'll be back with you later on in the week. Um, and if I see anything that I want to put up uh, Cheltenham wise, I'll let you know. Um, there's Willie's unleashed night and day today, which is very impressive in the mayor's novice. I've got a list of where he sends his good uh, mayor's novice hurdlers um, and what event as well. I'm not going to put it all up straight away because obviously we all want to get the prices. So I'll wait and see and I'll put it up close to the time once the race entries come out. And then you can choose whether you want to take him like 20 or 25 to 1 against the likes of Lucia and Ashro Diamond, who I think at the moment have standout chances as well. So that's all from me. As I said, subscribe here on YouTube because I'm not going to keep plugging it over on Twitter. And if you're not following on Twitter, it's uh, at risk for rewards. And my blog is pinned to the profile. And my blog for the Cheltenham Festival will be released within about five days before the festival starts. Have a good week and I'll speak to you soon.